There was a lot of questions on group-based policy. Uh, that's why uh, we, uh, we wanted to spend some time on uh, group-based policy and what, wh when would you use it, who would want to use this. Um, we'll talk about group-based policies and how, how we get to this. Group-based policy is GBP in short. Uh, it is, it sits, it's a simple tag. It sits in the VXLAN header. Uh, we are able to actually say, uh, we know, in, in the traditional firewall filters, uh, you could do, you know, uh, segmentation based on VLANs, IP subnets, that, that resulted in a lot of uh, firewall rules, and then you started hitting, you know, TCAM uh, places. So how can we make this simpler and also solve for the most important problem. Microsegmentation is a larger, larger terminology. I think if we take a couple of point use cases which can come into mind, there's influx of IoT devices that are pl plugging into the wired switching network now. Uh, the, I, there's a school, a school district that I work with very closely. And uh, initially they said, okay, we're gonna move everything to Wi-Fi. Uh, there's gonna be much lesser switches when they said they would refresh. Turns out the host of devices that's on their network now IP clocks, uh, you know, cameras, you name them. Lots of things require power. Lights, uh, all of these things require power. They would want to control them, you know, when they want it to be turned on, turned off, all of that remotely, so you can, you, you're green as well. Uh, and now there's a host of devices on the network. Now that also means host of devices through which you can get into the network. So how do we actually say, what, what are things that these devices can talk to, especially at the layer two level? Would we want them to communicate to each other and instantiate a DDoS attack rather or not? Uh, so for example, cameras, there was a, there was a attack of, of that nature. How can we prevent uh, devices or isolate devices from talking to each other? A uh, use case of that would be, you know, whenever they are on board, uh, whatever your favorite way of tagging is, we'll talk about the different ways of tagging tag them and say, if cameras cannot talk to cameras, say camera tag cannot talk to camera tag. That's, and then say, in the next policy, say cameras can only talk to their controller, which is an IP address, or it could be another tag also. That's a simple use point use case to say when this could be really powerful. Uh, you do not even want their broadcasts to be exchanged between each other, and that's the true power of micro-segmentation. So they're not talking to each other in, in any form. Um, that's, that's uh, you know, overall how you would want to do group-based policies. And what are we bringing to the table? Obviously, this is a standard. Now, you have one point of policy management in the form of MIST. We, we configured the entire campus fabric from the MIST dashboard. Now, we are also saying you can configure policy at one point, and that could be templatized. You're talking thousands of switches that you manage. Can we manage them simply using a same form factor of templatization? We said you could templatize. Uh, all pieces. A, a couple of quick questions. You said it's a standard, but you got a draft URL up there. Is it a standard that's been that's a full RFC? At uh, this point? It is. A, it is still a draft standard. It is written in 2017. To my knowledge, we are the only vendor who actually utilizes Impl it. utilizes it. Yeah. The the bit within the header itself. And, and are you able to read that in hardware? Yes. Okay. So yeah. that's that's something that was in. Just in, in EX switches with it is, your chips? It is, it is EX switches 5120s as well. So the, so the EX4400, EX4100, the QFX5120, and, 50, and 4650, they all support GBP at this level. Okay, so we're saying it's a standard. Practically speaking, I'm in the Juniper ecosystem to leverage group-based policy. Is yes. that fair? Yes. Okay. Yes. Do, do you have a way within MIST AI to monitor tag to tag communication. So let's say I'm, I'm trying to build my baseline of what should talk to what. I want to see what's out there today and I can determine how to write that policy. Is there a way within MIST I can go in and, and see like a, a matrix of, hey, these tags are typically talking to these tags on, on these ports and protocols? I'll quickly get to the okay. demo. It's a great yes, question. Is, yeah. It's a very good question. Yeah. Uh, uh, we'll definitely showcase that. So that's, uh, group-based policy and what we bring to the table. MIST helps you, uh, you know, with one policy management frame, but now your actual implementation of this happens locally at the switches, hopefully closest to the, to the source where you are at. We saw this uh, being built right in front of you here. Uh, we want to just take it up a notch. We said we are having communication between desktop one and desktop two. We don't want that to happen. And uh, let's see how, how to break uh, how to break the communication. Um, I want to talk about uh, the 
uh, the tag administration itself, because that's that's the most critical part of this whole con concept of uh, you know group based policies. Now, in from from a perspective of uh, tagging, uh, if you see we've built a, a bunch of tags in there already. If you say add GBP tags. Um, this is the MIST UI again. It's the same template that we use to administer the rest of the full campus, your networks, your VLANs, all of these pieces. Now we've just added uh, the ability for you to do group-based tagging as well. So the tags can either be dynamic or static. Dynamic is a way for you to say, I would like for this device to receive a tag from a radius attribute value pair. And the attribute value pair is listed there. It says um, Juniper switching filter and apply action you know, the GBP tag itself. So uh, depending upon how you posture your clients, how you uh, onboard your clients, you can give a tag of, of whatever the nature is for anything that is a supplicant or, uh, uh, yeah, any device that is a supplicant that's reaching uh, the, the radius server. So that's, you know, for the volume set of devices that, you know, that are usually supplicants uh, or even doing uh, MacAuth okay. uh, can all get the tags directly. So that's dynamic. That's easy to on board, so you're not in the business of adding static tags. But sometimes you also have uh, devices that are outside your fabric, uh, or even subnets that are out your, outside your fabric, but you still want to administer them to say, my employee subnet should not be talking to this particular website in, or this particular IP scheme or uh, IP subnet, where, whatever the reason is. You could statically say, uh, let me call it the, uh, you, you can either say a particular MAC address, uh, a network, uh, which is another VLAN. Um, you can do VLAN to VLAN communication as fully blocked and then add a policy to say only to talk to a controller. Or you could also uh, IP subnet to say uh, 192.168.0.1 or 0.0.0/16 is off limits for this particular tag. And that can also be tagged statically. So anything that's outside the fabric usually uh, or well within the fabric that cannot do supplicant uh, uh, nature, uh, then definitely there are candidates for them to be static tags. All of these tags are individually pushed down to individual switches, so they are all in the know uh, of uh, what tag this belongs to. That way we can position ingress tagging more and more. Now, from a policy perspective, uh, currently, as you can see, desktop one is talking to desktop two. Uh, the, uh, so you can go ahead and hit uh, block, and then let's, we'll go kill. Let's set up the, make sure we're pinging these guys back here. I think we are. Doink, doink. Yes, okay, so they're pinging across each other. And we will change the policy to block. Block, and then you could save the configuration. And let's go back, after saving, let's go back to the policy sets itself. So, yeah. So if you go down all the way to the policy set real quick, uh, the tagging is done here, and their corresponding policies are built here. So you could actually choose to use any of these tags here on on your uh, on on uh, at, at the policy itself. So this is where you define the policy usage on a per device basis. If you go to the switches tab and then go to the access switch that we are. Uh, So if you saw, we didn't build any of these uh, uh, configurations on this particular switch. We inherited everything from the template, but we also have the ability to pull usages. Uh, this is uh, to answer your question, which policies are being hit more, which policies are being hit less. Uh, this is a constant dashboard where you can uh, get to. So let's quickly look at the... Uh, and to add on to that, do you, so do you have a way to tag devices without doing the enforcement? So you can just see before I'm enforcing, I want to make sure I know what day-to-day -day communication is. So you I could, you could have a policy to allow. Okay. Yeah. And and just, then look yeah. at the usages. Just allow it. So you just can then you go deny them and say, that's a really good uh, use yep. case, actually. Yep. Uh, you build the policy, look at the usage, if it's only few or if it's a lot, right. depending upon how you'd want to implement. And, and I might have missed it, but where in there did it define whether the enforcement was at ingress or egress? So from a tagging perspective, that's the beauty of it. At this point in time, uh, the tagging is, you know, you can say desktop one to desktop two is, uh, you, you don't have to mention the direction yeah, you, totally from a it, tag perspective. It, it's actually, so um, th this is irrelevant whether it's ingress or egress, how it's tagged. Okay. I mean, in, in other words, the tagging policy itself, you tell the system through, uh, through a command that I want to do ingress policy enforcement. Okay. Right. 
So uh, at this point, you see the actual uh, device is no longer pinging. Uh, this can be expanded to as, as further you'd want to take it. Right? This is a simple example of desktop one not talking to desktop two. This could be you tell, tagging all of your cameras and then a lot, not allowing camera to camera communication, only to controller communication. Whatever the use case is, it's administered here in one place and uh, it's, uh, it's, you can uh, observe uh, and then you can push this down to thousands of switches across, uh, across the entire segment. Can you get back to the CLI and cancel it so I can see the failed? Can I get back to the CLI? The CLI and cancel the ping so I can see Oh, the sure. Line. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, right now it's pinging at 90 packets, nothing. Thank you. Yep, Sorry, yep, right. No problem. <laughs> Hold our feet to fire. I love it. I love it. <laughs> you got to, right? Let's turn it back on and we'll make sure we're... We can turn the policy back on. And yeah, we'll... or turn it back on. Well, yeah, turn it back on, I guess. Awesome. Uh, so that's GBP. Uh, there's a whole lot of use cases we can do with it, but we wanted to bring about, you know, the, the ease of which you can manage that uh, and uh, how you can do... Pol and now it's pinging back again.